Windows Media Center has a lot of functionality in it that really, as a developer, you just want to get to. Here I have a simple Windows form. It's got a text box, a couple of buttons, and a data grid view in it. And what I'm going to do is wire these pieces up to the Media Center's electronic program guide so that we can program how to use the guide. So first of all, I need to add some references. And the key ones are two DLLs from the eHome group that are part of the Windows Media Center, EHEPG and EHRECOBJ, as in EH Record Object. Once I've added those two DLLs that can be found in the Windows eHomes directory, then I've essentially given my application the access it requires to the EPG database. Now, the database isn't a normal database. It's a particular um, SQLite implementation. I'm going to add a few other references. Uh, I need to use XML to be able to post my clip to record request and I need to create that as a file so I'm going to use system.io but then I can add in my references to those DLLs functionality. First of all the EPG database and secondly the scheduling system of the media center environment. Okay, cool. Now to save on all the typing, I've um, created myself some snippets. Now there is a great example called Simple Guide um, that's up on Casey Chestnut's site and I've taken from that a nice little routine that uh, shows you how to get hold of the current EPG file. A new file is downloaded every so often. It's an SDF type of file and it can be found in the Microsoft eHome EPG directory but you need to identify which is the latest one. So this little routine just merely works through the list of EPG files in a loop and identifies the latest file for us to use. Nice and simple. Ed adding some real code. Now the first thing I'm going to do in my button one is basically get the EPG data. Um, so to do this, I need to use some of the uh, eHome uh, database functionality which gives me the SQLite connection object so we have a very you know uh, ADO structure we have connection objects we have um, command objects and we of course have data adapters so having got my current file I can open it I can then define a SQL command um, which uses pretty much standard SQL uh, language for us to be able to um, program that I have to do a number of joins. The database is quite um, normalized, so I need to join across several tables to be able to get all the data that I actually want um, to find out not only what a program is called, what it's about, what channel it's on, and what time it's on. Uh, it requires me to, to go across a variety of tables. Uh, Cases sample, again, has a great uh, diagram of the database for you to refer to. Then it's just a simple case of executing the data adapter um, against that command and taking the first table, which we assume to be the results table, and binding our data grid view to that table. Then we also resize our columns and refresh, and we should have our current list of programs listed in our data grid view. Now, I use the text box to actually put in a program title um, data value and here I'm searching for doc uh, percent looking for Doctor Who to be able to actually record and you can see there we go we've got our call sign our service name which could be two different things but are pretty much the same in this instance um, and they're used to identify the channel that the program is actually on so now we can actually look into the EPG guide. That's pretty useful. Um, but let's actually use the click to record functionality of Windows Media Center and program it so that we can record the selected program from our EPG results. Now to do that, the easiest way is to actually use the sample C2R, C2R file, the click to record file, which is here. And using that as a template, I simply replace uh, three key values for program service and airing so that I have the program title, the station, the channel that it's actually on, 
and the program time specifically to record an instance. There are many other options for recording programs, but in 10 minutes, this is the one we're going to do, a specific instance. So you can see we do an inner XML replace um, with the values from our current data row in the grid, and we convert our date time to a very specific string format um, that we need to use um, to actually get the click to record functionality to work. And then we save out our request file and we'll come back and use that request file in a moment to actually execute a create schedule request. But let's just run our application and see how that goes. So I'm searching for doc percent again. There we go. And I can find Doctor Who and click record selected. And nothing much is going to happen because we haven't proceeded yet with the next step. So let's get on with that final piece of code. Let's actually have a look at the created file, and that's down in our debug directory. And if I open up my request XML, you can basically see that I've now got Doctor Who, BBC Three, and at seven o'clock on the second of the third, um, second of March, that is two thousand and nine. Okay, we close that out. Let's add in our final piece of code. And here we're just basically grabbing hold of that created request.xml file again. And then we're creating our event schedule, our schedule request, and our create schedule request result objects that we use in the next phase of creating our request to schedule the recording of a certain program. That's all done off the scheduler with a create schedule request. We put in our restrictions in the XML file. We define the policy for how the recording um, conflicts should be set up and uh, we capture a result object. And then we go down and um, basically we're going to print a, uh, a message box and capture some additional stats to see how it all, um, how fast it all occurs. So again, search for doc percent. Here we go, got Doctor Who, record selected. Uh, program and it, and it takes a while because we've created that file, saved the disk, loaded it up again, but then we're passing it off to the Windows Media Center system and that's searching the EPG. And there you have it, it found it, it scheduled no conflict, so there was no conflict associated with it. So this application really is the beginning for all sorts of other connectivity into your Windows Media Center. Have fun!